A circular economy aims to use less raw materials and to waste less. But do current policies in Europe sufficiently contribute to this? My research looks at existing policy practices in European countries, Italy, France and the Netherlands, and how effective or ineffective they are. Answering that question cannot be seen in isolation from the responsibility of producers. This, this is an issue of scarcity. We have limited resources, so we need to change how we use them. And therefore, producers have to change their practices of how many or how accessible these materials are. So how can we design products better? Kieran Campbell-Johnston's research contributes to the gathering of insights that point society, policy and business in the right direction. I'm really interested to learn and find out ways of changing consumption patterns, changing waste fuel that kind of behaviour and the policies that are needed to do this. We meet Kieran symbolically on the floor of the Recycling Service Centre in Amsterdam. If, if we look globally, at the moment we're producing around uh, 54 megatons of e-waste per year and this is only projected to increase in the coming decades. His research focuses specifically on the question, what happens at the end of life to the rare raw materials in electronics? So these can be things from fridges to phones and these can be uh, materials such as terbium, indium, etc. And what we observe and what we see in the current uh, recycling practices of lots of these uh, electronics is that many of these rare materials, although small in quantity, are currently being lost. And therefore, as a society, maybe we need to be thinking about, well, if we are losing these materials, and these are themselves scarce, how should they best be used? Sonia Valdivia is a program manager at the World Resources Forum and an authority on the areas of sustainable recycling industries. So why are critical raw materials so important for the European economy? So critical raw materials are essential for almost uh, all industries and um, IT products, medicine, um, consumer goods. We could give an, an endless uh, list of examples and we face, we are starting to face growing um, concerns concerning their availability. Also prices are getting up. Happily, Europe has succeeded in compiling a general list of scarce metals, a list that is gaining more and more impact. The last one of 2020 um, has about 30 um, materials there. This is already a, an excellent starting point and this is spreading out. The energy transition stakes a major claim on rare earth metals. Lithium, for example, is crucial for battery technology and electric mobility. You know, the e-vehicles are now there, but also the batteries there in the e-vehicles that are based on lithium are changing, need to change, because lithium is getting so scarce or so expensive. Now let's see, we need to change the technology. Another notable challenge is that the consumer market is not focused on producing items with a long lifespan. And actually we need to be making products that last longer, that are more durable and therefore use less resources and themselves they need to be easier to recycle so we can recover these rare materials or cover the materials from them. But doesn't that mean that organising an economy which is more circular is almost impossible? Uh, it's, it's not impossible, but like everything, it requires a change. And it requires an integration of two different fields which have usually been very far apart. So the production of a product and the waste of a product. And what we are proposing is greater integration of these two different bodies. And this needs to happen at the policy level. So more coordination is needed, both for resetting targets for recycling of these rare materials, but also to influence if they are used and how they are used in the product design. So it comes down to better regulation, which is needed. This is confirmed by this Flemish entrepreneur who tries to process used electronics in the most circular way possible. From 100% of uh, e-waste, we make 89% uh, of secondary raw material. Legislation is the driver uh, most of the time to push producers to do something uh, about this. <laughs> Um, a big thing would be, for example, 50% of the materials they use should be recycled content uh, within, let's say, 10 years. Eh? 
So an iPhone, for instance, is not uh, designed for disassembly. Eh? It is uh, designed for not to be assembled. Eh? So that should change uh, in a short way so that the consumer himself can change the battery. So there is a, a huge step to make, uh, to make it reusable again, to make it possible to uh, change components, uh, or when it is, that is not uh, possible, to recycle it properly. This all comes together in the concept of Extended Producers' Responsibility, or EPR, an arrangement that in fact already existed for several decades in the European Union. Give producers more responsibility, give them responsibility for the waste stage, and hopefully then they'll change the product design, the product practices. In reality, this just doesn't happen. So, so our proposal to, to integrate Extended Producers' Responsibility better with questions of product design and eco-design is firstly looking at what exactly can we recover at the waste stage? What materials can we recover? And if you think about these rare materials, uh, these need to be maybe prioritized in the targets that we put for producers, uh, the targets that are needed, the recovery targets that are needed. And if we can't recover these materials, well, it's obvious, then that needs to go into the product design to make them either less quantities of these materials used or to make them more accessible, more recyclable. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I went to Brussels uh, to give a presentation. Yeah, yeah, no, okay. A better EPR should therefore lead to an incentive to design products differently. It's an opinion that can also be heard at this new circular location, Ecodor Buckel in the south of the Netherlands. So, we don't have much uh, appliances here in the house, electronics, but this is a this nice is example. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think regulation is, is easy to incorporate in our society, in our way that we manufacture things and in the way that we use things as a, as, as a society. Make sure that the rare metals can be uh, disassembled out of it. Uh, make sure that it's easier repairable. You can, with regulation, it's, it's easy to incorporate. Would you like a cup of coffee? This newly established community chose to rent rather than buy their new kitchens. This kitchen is uh, rented, so we, we have it here for 20 years and then every part of it goes back to uh, the producer. This is the first uh, circular kitchen that is uh, being made in the Netherlands. An incentive to make products more circular also means incurring more costs in the production processes. But who pays for this? So producers should pay for this free. So the idea of extending producer responsibility is the, the polluter should pay. According to Sonia Valdivia, greater involvement in the producer and commodity markets will have positive consequences. Higher prices make it necessary to search for better alternatives. So there is an opportunity. And what is happening is that Industries are opening their eyes and understanding how important, also that they have an influence on importing. I mean, this, this is important to know what they are buying in order to prevent limitations for their exporting purposes. And at the end of the day, the prices market will push us. Well, we, we have to waste less, we have to consume less, and EPR policies provide a part of the solution to doing that. It's not the whole story, but it's part of the solution. The European Cresting Project analyzes the state of the art in circular economy practices. Professor Walter Vermeulen supervises the research of these three PhD candidates. He sees an inconvenient truth in each of them. Here the inconvenient truth is that despite uh, 20 years policies on recycling, uh, we still are not uh, opting for the highest value retention options. And this is partly because of the organization of extended producer responsibility, which uh, gives producers the responsibility, but it doesn't really uh, stimulate uh, the better options uh, to be uh, implemented. His work thus exposes the vulnerability of the current system, but also provides an impetus for a better approach and, says Kieran, we really need to get that going now. We have to realise we're living on a finite planet. We can't keep consuming and wasting the way we've, we've done in the past. It's just not sustainable and it's just not healthy for the planet, for us as a society. So we need to think of ways to, to change those patterns and extended produce responsibility can contribute to some of these issues, to solving some of these technical issues in the waste stage.